Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I will continue talking about certain uh, introductory concepts of uh, geometry. Today's topic is symmetry. Symmetry. Uh, now, during my previous lecture about congruent geometrical figures, uh, I was talking about certain uh, uh, transformations uh, which help to identify or to prove that certain geometrical objects are congruent. And one of these transformations uh, was called a reflection, reflection relative to the axis. Another was a rotation. Now, uh, let's consider the word symmetry. It's very much, it's very closely related to these two uh, transformations. Uh, rotation around certain point and reflection uh, around certain axis. Um, we will consider the term symmetry in two different meanings. One is a characteristic of an object to be symmetrical, and another, a symmetry would be a transformation which I was just talking about. So, um, let me address first the transformation. Um, rotation uh, around certain point by certain angle is very simple, as you know. This is just rotation of this segment which connects the uh, center of uh, rotation with our point into a different location, A prime. So point A, after, look, uh, after rotation by this angle alpha, will um, take the position of uh, A prime. So this is a rotation. And uh, now the question is, what kind of a geometrical object has a property of transforming into itself after this particular uh, rotation. Well, consider, for instance, uh, a circle. And the center of rot rotation will be the center of the circle. Now, if you will rotate any point on the curve, which is the circle, uh, by any angle, it will also fall onto the point of a circle. So basically, regardless of the value of the angle alpha of rotation, the circle transforms into itself after this particular rotation. And that's what actually makes a circle a figure which is symmetrical relative to rotation around its center by any angle. Now, if you will take a different figure, Let's say you have a square. Now, this is the center of the square. Now, if you will rotate a square uh, around this particular uh, center of rotation by 90 degree, only 90 degree, then this particular segment will be convert it into this position, this into this, this into this, etc. So square will be converted into itself. So rotation by 90 degree is transforming a circle into its, uh, sorry, a square into itself. So that's why we're calling as uh, a square, a, a geometrical figure which is symmetrical um, relative to rotation by 90 degree around uh, its uh, center, where the diagonals are crossing each other. By the way, if it's um, symmetrical relative to this particular ro rotation by 90 degree, it's also symmetrical by 180 and 270 and every multiple of 90. So these are examples of symmetrical figures. Now, um, I would also like to talk about the symmetry relative to the axis. Um, now, the definition of this is the following. If you have a line, which we call an axis of symmetry, and a point anywhere outside of this line, then you draw a perpendicular, 
and uh, ex extend it to the same length. So this length is equal to this length. So this will be a reflection relative to this particular um, uh, axis of re reflection. So if we can transform a point, we can transform, obviously, any kind of a geometrical figure, and reflection will convert one into another. Now, there are certain geometrical figures which are transformed onto themselves uh, during this operation of reflection. And here is an example. Let's have, again, a circle with this line crossing its center. Now, it can be proven that if you will uh, um, reflect relative to this axis um, our circle, it will turn into itself. This side will overlap with this, and this one will overlap with that. So basically, um, a circle is a symmetrical figure relative to a reflection uh, uh, of the line which is crossing its center. Now, if it's not crossing the center, then this, for, for, for instance, line, then the circle is not symmetrical relative to this because it will be converted into this, not to itself. So it's very important that the line, which is the axis of reflection, is crossing the center. Now, other examples of um, symmetrical in this particular sense figures, uh, for instance, you have an isosceles triangle and you have the line, which is basically its altitude from the uh, vertex down to the base. Now, it can be proven that this is exactly uh, the axis of symmetry, because every um, segment of this type will be transformed into this one, so the whole triangle will turn upon itself. Um, now, um, so we actually have two different kinds of symmetry. The symmetry which is related to rotation by some angle, and the symmetry which is related to reflection. There is only one little detail about rotation. Sometimes you, uh, you might hear that this particular figure is centrally symmetrical. Well, centrally symmetrical basically means it's symmetrical relative to rotation by 180 degree. And um, let's say um, you have, um, well, the same square. Now, square is centrally symmetrical relative to its center, because if you will turn by 180 degree, uh, the whole thing will turn upon itself. And uh, the definition of this is very much equivalent to the following definition. If you have a center of rotation, then any point to convert it into centrally uh, symmetrical would be connected to the center and uh, ex expanded by the same lengths. So you will have this point. Now, obviously, A prime can be obtained from A not by this process of connecting by a segment and then expanding the segment, but by uh, rotation of this segment by 180 degree, because 180 degree makes uh, the whole line straight. So basically, when you're talking about centrally symmetrical figures, it, it means either the definition of the central symmetry as this one, which means you are connecting um, the, uh, any point with the center and then extend it by the same length, or you turn the whole figure by 180 degree equivalent. So the central, uh, central is symmetrical uh, and uh, reflected, basically, kind of sy symmetry, re reflection kind of symmetry are mm, most you know, uh, thoroughly studied in geometry. Um, now, there are certain figures much more complex than I could just 
um, drawn, which do have this property of being symmetrical. Well, uh, for instance, let me, uh, for instance, this is a regular hexagon. Well, it has lots of different symmetries in it. Well, number one, from the rotational standpoint, obviously, now this is uh, 60 degrees, so it's symmetrical uh, relative to a rotation around the center of the hexagon um, if you turn it by 60 degrees. Uh, also, obviously it's symmetrical by 120, 180, 240, and 300, and 360 degree because uh, they're all multiples of 60. Now, another symmetry can be observed is related to reflection relative to, let's say, this particular line. It's symmetrical in this way. So this might be an axis of symmetry. Or you can have this as an axis of symmetry. It will also be symmetrical. So there are many different axes of symmetry uh, as far as the reflection is concerned. Um, well, actually, at least uh, one, two, three, and one, two, three, at least six. Three, which is uh, uh, three, three axes of symmetry which uh, contain the vertexes, and uh, three axes of symmetry which are perpendicular to the lines. So these are all axes of symmetry. There are six of them. And also, it's centrally symmetrical uh, because uh, obviously 180 degrees is multiple of 60, and its uh, rotation uh, converts it into the same uh, figure after rotating by 60 degrees around the center. So it has many different um, axes and uh, one center, but many different angles of, uh, of symmetry, reflection or rotation. Okay, so, what's interesting about symmetrical figures? Well, obviously the most important thing is if two figures are symmetrical to each other, then they are congruent. Because symmetry is one of those non-deforming transformations. Um, and uh, so if we want to prove that two different geometrical objects are uh, congruent, um, if you see that they are symmetrical, if you can prove that they are symmetrical, that's sufficient, basically. Uh, okay, so that would be it for a uh, lecture about the symmetry. It's uh, just an introduction. Uh, the real uh, geometrical theorems uh, and, uh, and, and different logical concepts will be introduced in, in some other later lectures. But I would like, actually, to make sure that the concept of congruency and symmetry are well familiar to you and uh, you can use them. Uh, thanks very much.